What if a $10 billion mega project built to rescue a city from gridlock was almost buried alive by poison? Today, we're diving into the unbelievable story of Melbourne's Westgate Tunnel, a project defined by giant machines, hidden toxins, and one of the costliest infrastructure battles in Australia's history. Melbourne's Westgate Tunnel was meant to be a $10 billion game changer. Instead, it became infamous for something no one saw coming toxic soil. When crews uncovered 1.5 million cubic meters of earth contaminated with dangerous forever chemicals, the entire project ground to a halt. Tunneling machines froze in place. Workers were sent home. And what was supposed to be a proud symbol of progress spiraled into one of Australia's most poisoned mega projects. The soil wasn't merely a construction issue, it was an environmental crisis. These PFAS chemicals, short for per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, are used in products ranging from firefighting foam to non-stick cookware. They're nicknamed forever chemicals because they resist breaking down in nature or in the human body. Once they seep into soil or water, they can travel for decades linked to cancers, immune issues and developmental problems. In short, it was the last thing you'd want under a mega project, and now Melbourne had millions of tons of it on its hands. The discovery triggered lawsuits, public outrage, and years of bitter disputes over who would pay the price of cleaning it all up. The toxic soil battle not only delayed construction, it blew up the budget. What started as a $5.5 billion plan ballooned to over 10 billion, with some reports putting the true figure closer to $12 billion. The soil problem alone added 3.3 billion. Breaking the stalemate required a painful financial settlement. Victorian taxpayers were forced to contribute nearly 2 billion more. Transurban, the private company behind the project, had to pay 2.2 billion dollars. And the construction firms lost over a billion in expected revenue. The bill kept climbing, and so did public anger. Perhaps the most controversial part of the settlement wasn't the immediate cost, but the long-term deal struck with Transurban. In exchange for covering part of the overruns, the company secured a lucrative extension of its toll road contract. That deal now allows Transurban to collect tolls until the mid-2040s, projected to generate an extra $37 billion in profit. Critics slammed it as corporate welfare, calling it a taxpayer-funded bailout that handed Transurban decades of guaranteed revenue. What was once celebrated as a public-private partnership became branded as a political and financial fiasco. If you're enjoying this deep dive into Australia's most poisoned mega-project, make sure to hit the like button so more people can discover it and subscribe for more epic mega-build stories every week. The handling of the toxic soil only made matters worse. With no landfill in the state capable of processing the sheer volume of PFAS contaminated earth, the government's Environment Protection Authority rushed through emergency regulations. Normal consultation processes were skipped and residents near the proposed disposal sites were cut out of the decision entirely. Communities erupted in protest. They feared their neighbourhoods would become dumping grounds for millions of tonnes of toxic waste. An investigation by the Victorian Ombudsman later blasted the EPA, accusing it of failing to protect residents' health and human rights. The project's credibility took yet another hit. With all this controversy, it's easy to forget why Melbourne undertook such a massive risk in the first place. The answer lies in a single structure, the Westgate Bridge. For decades, it's been the city's main artery between downtown and the booming western suburbs. Over 200,000 vehicles crawl across it daily, making it one of the busiest and most congested roads in Australia. The bridge operates at capacity every single day, meaning even the smallest accident can paralyse traffic for hours. Melbourne needed an alternative, a new river crossing that could finally break the stranglehold of gridlock. The Westgate Tunnel project was never just about boring a tunnel. It was about re-engineering the city's transport network. The plan called for expanding freeways from eight lanes to 12, building entirely new bridges, and creating elevated roads that would remove 9,000 trucks a day from residential streets. This was a once-in-a-generation overhaul of Melbourne's road network. And to pull it off, engineers needed the biggest machines ever brought to the Southern Hemisphere. The stars of the underground effort were two colossal, tunnel-boring machines nicknamed Bella and Vida. 
Each one stretched 90 metres long, weighed 4,000 tonnes and carried a cutter head with a diameter as tall as a five-storey building. They were more than machines, they were mobile factories. Inside, crews of up to 20 people worked around the clock in shifts, navigating like submarine pilots in a pressurised steel cylinder. The air pressure was so high in some zones that workers had to undergo special decompression training, just like deep sea divers. The dangers were real, sudden equipment failures, ground collapses, and the constant stress of working 35 metres below ground under the water table, with thousands of tonnes of earth pressing above. Bella took on the 4km outbound tunnel, while Vida tackled the 2.8km inbound route. With every metre they dug, the TBMS installed curved concrete segments, building the tunnel as they advanced. It was a relentless industrial ballet performed in the dark beneath Melbourne. To keep up with the machine's appetite, a $60 million factory was built in Benalla to manufacture the tunnel's skeleton. It produced more than 28,000 precast concrete segments, each one a vital piece of the tunnel's shell. Transporting them to Melbourne was a logistical feat of its own. Freight trains carried most of the load thanks to a new 700-metre rail siding built specifically for the project. But some oversized components, massive structures weighing up to 160 tonnes, were too big for rail. These had to be hauled on superload trucks 52 metres long, crawling down highways at 25 kilometres per hour in the dead of night. While the TBMS carved underground, construction crews were also transforming the skyline. A massive gantry crane, 160 metres long and weighing 1,200 tonnes, was used to lift and place nearly 1,600 concrete road segments to create a soaring 2.5 kilometre elevated roadway. The crane worked like a giant zipper, hoisting segments weighing up to 100 tonnes and locking them into place piece by piece high above the ground. The sight was surreal, traffic still flowing below while an entirely new highway was stitched together in mid-air. The new bridge over the Maribyrnong River, along with the dramatic tunnel entrances, incorporated bold architectural features. The northern portal was framed by a 38-metre-tall timbernet structure of sweeping arches, while the bridge itself was clad in patterns inspired by eel traps and fish scales, a tribute to Aboriginal heritage and the area's maritime past. These artistic touches were meant to soften the hard edge of industrial construction, turning a mega-project into something the community could take pride in. After years of setbacks, ballooning costs and fierce controversy, the Westgate Tunnel is finally edging toward completion. The opening date, originally set for 2022, has been pushed back three years to late 2025. When finished, it promises to slash travel times by up to 20 minutes, ease pressure on the Westgate Bridge and reconnect Melbourne's west with 14 kilometres of new walking and cycling paths. But its legacy is already complicated. It stands as a symbol of both engineering brilliance and political scandal, a project defined as much by poisoned soil and financial blowouts as by the machines that carved it from the ground. The Westgate Tunnel is proof that even the most ambitious projects can be brought to their knees by the mistakes of the past. But it's also a reminder of the power of engineering to overcome those challenges. What do you think? Was it worth it? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you want more stories of the world's biggest and most extreme mega builds.